New, 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 new. All right. So uh, here's the thing. Because Christmas falls on a Wednesday, and there's many other holidays right around now, maybe you were busy. Maybe you just forgot. You had a big list. Don't worry. It's okay. You can go to adafruit.com slash gift certificates, and you can just you can print out this beautiful um, gift certificate Graphic. reserve note. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> reserve note. Legal tender. Good, good for at one Adafruit. Adafruit. And uh, you can do that now. And it's all electronic, and you can also print it out if you wanted to. But you could do that. The other thing you can do is give someone a gift of Ada Box. They wouldn't get it right now anyway. That's be good like, because I've been thinking about you all year, but the, this is it. You get it starting in March. I, it's actually the best time to order is now because one, you'll get in, you'll start, yeah. and then all year they're going to get four projects and they're going to be it's like, like giving four gifts. And each project has ten. Each box has four, ten projects. So it's basically like a project every single week yeah. that they can build. There's no, they'll not run out. And Absolutely. because we do math, yeah. um, most people who started Ada Box from the very beginning are still around. That's correct. That we good? did the math. You can cancel any time. But why we would we? We did you? the SQL query. Yeah. So, anyways, and speaking of Ada Box, we now have Ada Box 14 standalone. That's right. In the store. If you missed out, or maybe you liked it so much you want another one, we have. A couple dozen Ada Box 14s. Not that many. 14s. And it comes with a little, Not that many. It comes with a sheet that has all the stuff. But, and you know, here's the thing. You can't read that from here. Here's what you get. Here's what you get. Here's the deal. I will say, we are no longer making Ada Boxes after we sell through. We Pretty used much to. Pretty much now. And we actually, we're not going to do it anymore because it's it's a ton of work because it only really makes sense to it do it. It just means the Ada Boxes are 4, more special. So. so here's the deal. If you don't get it, we're not going to make any more. Once they're done, Probably they're done. Probably that is it. So you get okay. a blue fruit. So you get a circuit playground and blue fruit. And you get a color TFT gizmo. I think both items are even out of stock because they're so popular. Yep. And you get all these cool accessories. You get the LiPo battery and the battery charger. You get a protective case. You get the snow globe kit that comes with these like really cool like snowflake decoration thingies. Yeah. Uh, and you get um, the ornament holder that you see is very popular. And you get the glasses that uh, make your Christmas even more dazzling. So it's an all-in-one, no solder pack kit. I recommend it. Uh, it also, if you order now, you may get some extra goodies. Who knows? But maybe, maybe not. They're a secret. Okay. So yeah. Next up. Okay, we have two thermal cameras in the store now. We've carried the AMG 8833 for a while, which is an eight by eight IR LED matrix camera. This one is a little bit more expensive, but it has way more pixels, 32 by 24. Um, so you're getting a higher resolution and there's two of them. One of them it is kind of shorty and it has, I think, 110 degree and then one of them is a little bit longer. Can show the next one? Yeah, go uh, keep going. Uh, go to the oh, that one. one. That one's a little longer and it has a narrower range. Otherwise, it's the same code. Like the only way you can even tell which one you have is by physically looking at it because they actually just have a different lens. Okay. And let me show. And this is what you can do with it. Let me show. Yeah, I'm going to show it on the overhead. Do it live. Yeah, this one you kind of have to do live. So here I've got the Pi badge. It's actually the, the testing jig that we use to test it. And this is the camera, and you can actually even see it's, it's watching me. So I can, hold on. it's like, hi, that's my face. And I can, I can wave my hand in front. Yeah, point it up, and I'm going to just sneak my hand over and just see if I can get a hand shape going over here. Oh, yeah, here, you can this. see the lamp, and then you can see, hi, V for victory. So the, the line you see above, it's the, um, we have a fluorescent gonna, light. I'm going to make a little shadow puppets here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so one thing you might be alligator. noticing is there's a little bit of a, a checkerboard pattern, especially when you move really fast. That's normal. The reason you're seeing that is because um, when you are reading data from the thermal camera, it's called uh, like a checkerboard um, by frame read. It doesn't read all the pixels like in a row. It actually reads every other pixel. It can't read each pixel one at a time. It has to read them alternating probably because it doesn't want to have any self-heating. So when you are reading the data, you read every other pixel in a checkerboard and then you read the opposite pixels and then you put them together to create a frame, which means that if things are moving slowly, you get a, you know a pretty clear thermal image. But if things are moving fast, you'll see a little bit of a checkerboard pattern. Again, it's normal and if you want, you can do some math to, to try to average it out a little bit more. But um, this is just a, you know Arduino compatible 
using it. We also have uh, Python code, so you can use it with a Raspberry Pi, and that looks really amazing. We did a couple of videos with that. And this is um, even without any um, uh, oversampling or uh, bicubic interpolation, so you can get even uh, better quality. But this is this is a really good quality sensor. Uh, again, it comes with you know the long and uh, short style. Oops, short style. So I can I can swap this out, and uh, I'll show the other one. Um, so yeah, you can use it with Arduino. Um, I will say. Because of the way the algorithm is done for these, you really need a fairly powerful uh, chip to read the sensor data from this camera. So um, a SAMD51 is definitely what I recommend. You need at least 20K of RAM. I think a SAMD21 might be able to do it. I recommend just go straight to the SAMD51, um, but it communicates over I squared C. It can you know boost it up. You can do up to, I think, 10 frames per second. Yeah. So it's a really great thermal camera, and the price is way better than you know one of those like FLIR cameras, and it might be good enough. Like this might be good enough quality for you to uh, to use to um, detect people like me. Hi, I'm a person, yeah. or to uh, you know you can wave it over a board to see where uh, your heat is coming from. Like here in a Raspberry Pi, you can see it's coming from the center of the chip. Yeah, this is cool. And of course, it has Stemma connectors, so that means you can use it for lots of different things. Yes, it's plug and play, and you can plug it into yeah. all sorts of stuff. Okay. All right, next up. So next up, um, we have a uh, motor. So this is, I'm trying to figure out where my motor went. I had it. Oh, here it is. Okay, so this is a mini stepper motor. These are so cute. This is a NEMA 8 motor. It's very small, uh, but it's well loved. And uh, you give it five volt power using our stepper drivers, and you can have, hold on, sorry, just, I'm gonna plug it in. So here I'm using a feather motor uh, driver, and uh, you've got a little stepper. It's got 200 That's a cute stepper. degrees per revolution, so 1.8, uh, sorry, 200 steps per revolution, that's 1.8 degrees. Uh, this is just running a simple back and forth test. Uh, it's got mounting holes, but yeah, it's basically just like those steppers that we have that are large, but it's really small. But it still has that precision. You can uh, micro step it, of course. It'll work with any of the um, common micro stepping drivers because uh, it's just a, a basic bipolar stepper motor. And uh, it's really small. Great for uh, micro CNC builds. Okay. I was visited by three ghosts. And they said the star of the show tonight. Oh, I think we skipped the LSM. Which one did we skip? Oh, the one in the middle. Which one? Oh, so right, right there. This one? Yeah, uh, one more. LSM six docks. Yeah. The, those ghosts. Yeah, it went in the middle. Those ghosts warned me about Ooh, this. okay. So this got snuck in between the two thermal cameras. Right. So we have <laughs> the ST LSM 6D SOX. Um, this is a six DOF sensor. That's what the six stands for. It's a yeah. triple axis accelerometer and a triple axis gyro. So it's an IMU, great for motion detection. And this is the latest generation of um, sensors from ST that can do uh, IMU sensing. And um, they've gotten really better and they've gotten a lot smaller too. So I can show this on the overhead. It tried to, it was so small it snuck through. It snuck through. So this is our standard Stemma QT, 0.7 by one inch. That's the sensor in the middle there, and you have the axes. And then here it's connected to our STM32 F405 Feather, which is very popular. And best of all, it's got that Stemma port on the end. So this is plug and play. There's just you know a, a long cable connecting these, but no soldering required. And you've got some little bit of Arduino code here, just printing out the accelerometer and gyroscope data. So I'm definitely noticing the gyroscope is a lot more stable. Like if I press this against the table, um, you know, there's a little bit of an offset, but it's less than a degree per second, mm. which is really good. You'll always have a little bit of offset, but it's much less than other six DOF sensors. It's got I squared C and SPI. So if you want to use SPI for some reason, you can you know solder up to these headers. Two interrupts, and it's got um, support for an external I squared C or SPI port. This, I guess, is used for optical image stabilization. We don't use it, but uh, check out the documentation if you want to use this for more advanced purposes. Um, this LSM 6 docs is kind of the, the next generation, so I think if you want to 
Uh, for example, make a um, self-balancing robot, or you want to make a drone that has self-stabilization. Um, upgrading to this from like the MPU 6050, you'll get a lot better results. Uh, and it isn't that much more expensive, um, but the quality of MEMS sensors has greatly improved. So really excited to see uh, more and better sensors coming from ST. So this is the ST LSM 6D SOX, and we'll soon have um, the ISM version, the industrial version, which is even more stable. But for now, we've got uh, this version, which is kind of for more um, standard uses for like commercial uses. And we've got both an Arduino library and CircuitPython and Python libraries. So you can use with Arduino, CircuitPython, or a Raspberry Pi or other single board computers. And uh, one quick question, I think, related to this. Can you run this and record with a data logger? Absolutely. I mean, okay. that's what this is really great for. And you can though. do sensor fusion as well to combine this to turn this into orientation data. Yeah. All right. So there you go. OK, so now let's get back to the um, the start of the show that the okay. three ghosts were telling me about. They're tricky. Uh, here we go. OK, so this is the start of the show. We have those two guides about the MCP2221. This is actually the 221A, which is the uh, silicon revision, which increases the UART speed. And this is great, because it's USB-C on one end, and then you get GPIO and Stemma, QT, and breakouts on the other end. And this chip, all it does is it takes USB HID data or CDC UART data and converts it for you, and we even have Blinka support. So what's neat is that you plug this into your computer, and now you can run all of our Circuit Python libraries and communicate with various sensors, LEDs, buttons, and devices. So for example, this here is a MacBook. You can see it's got a USB-C cable connecting to the MCP221A on the side there on the table, and then it's holding the LSM6 DSX uh, six DOF sensor. And as you're moving it, the, um, this is a Jupyter notebook in Python. It's live plotting that data directly into your computer um, at full speed, again, without the need of any microcontroller programming. It's just pure Python, and you just if you instantiate the CircuitPython library and just read the data. It's so easy. Um, no soldering required, because you can just plug into the end there of the Stemma QT connector, which is compatible with Quick. You can also use it with Grove sensors. This chip actually does a little bit more than I2C, although I like the I2C the most, of course. Um, it has a UART, so it also comes up as a uh, full RX TX UART, so you can also use this for uh, UART capable sensors and devices like uh, GPSs and um, some uh, particle sensors. It also has four GPIO. Uh, G0 through G3, and they can all do digital in and out. They don't have pull-ups or pull-downs, which is a little bit annoying, but uh, three of them have ADCs. It has a 10-bit ADC on three of those, um, so you can have three separate analog inputs, which is really nice. You, uh, the FT232H, which is a similar board, does not have ADC in. It also has a DAC. Uh, the DAC is shared between G2 and G3. It's only one DAC. It's not a dual DAC, and it's only five bits. But, you know, if you want a DAC, you just want to do maybe some, you know, basic uh, analog control of some feedback circuit. I don't know why they have a DAC in it, but they do. It's five bits. It works great. Again, works with the, our Circuit Python API, so you can use it from Python 3. And uh, it, you know, it was a little bit of a, a joy for Carter and I to go through and add support for all of uh, the interfaces on this. But we did it, and it works great. And, um, for example, uh, this demo, but... Um, as part of this guide, we also connected up to the thermal camera and read thermal camera data in. And this, the thermal camera is quite, it's quite a beast. I mean, it has transactions of uh, two kilobytes of I squared C data at a time. It's, it's super fun um, to read, but it, it performs admirably at that as well. So it's a low cost, but easy to use USB to I squared C bring, GPIO adapter. Bring physical computing to Python. I All think the sensors. And Anything it's that cheap. Stemma plugs in, you can bring it in. $20? Are you and kidding me? You can also do sensor development. So if you're, for example, so something what we do, when we're writing drivers for chips, yeah. instead of dealing, we love microcontrollers, they're wonderful, but there, you are dealing with this extra board that's, that's part of the interface and it can crash or it can, you know, you can have a brownout because of power. With this, we plug this into the computer, we connect the sensor, we start writing our drivers, and we don't have to worry about having this separate you know, my controller system, yeah. we get the driver all written out in Python, and then we just test to make sure. We need the middle works. controller. 
basically. <laughs> yeah. No middle middle controller here. It's I direct. think this is just this is that like I was saying it earlier in the show. It's a sleeper hit because there's a lot of people that know Python. They've always wanted to get sensor information in. And this is the way to do it. Yeah, I want to do a kit actually with this, maybe in the next week or two, where we have our most popular Stemma sensors, yeah. and you can plug and play them together, and then you know you can have sensor That's data cool. come into your computer. Um, again, you know, it's it's even if you could get an Arduino for two dollars, I know there's two dollar nanos, you still have to deal with programming that and then parsing the data back and forth over and download USB. Download IDs and don't do that. Stuff doesn't work. Get okay. get it direct. So uh, that's the MCP. Oh, <laughs>